Hi, I'm Cinnamon Coney, your Art Sherpa, and I'm really excited today to be coming to you to give a first impression of a new product that's on the market and show you three beginner paintings that you can do very easily with this small set. So we went into our Michaels and we grabbed this Artist Loft 3. This is a new product for them. It's in their professional line. Uh, up until this point, they've just had Artist Loft paint. This is, they're saying this is totally pro. And what do you think about it? And I'm like, well, I'm an acrylic expert. I paint with this all the time. And so I thought it'd be really fun to try, show you how many different kinds of paintings you could do with one kit and give you my just straight up 100% honest first impression of it. So let's jump right in, do this project together. And I'll let you know what I thought of this pro paint or is it a no paint? you're gonna have to watch to find out. Come on. So we have our paint laid out neatly and ready to work. We have water to the side and our canvas set up. I'm gonna start with a small number four cat's tongue. I'm going to dip this in the water. This brush is for acrylic paint and I'm gonna make sure I don't have too much water. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow paint, flip the brush, grab some white, and I'm gonna be making this really fun diagonal brush stroke. You're just going from this corner downward, just back and forth, making this sweepy, swirly motion. Isn't that easy and fun? Get a little more white every once in a while. And when you do that, it's like little clouds are there. And I'm just taking my sunset, starting with yellow, right on the tip of my brush. I'm not pushing on my brush very hard in any way. I'm going to dip again, get a little more yellow. And then at this point, I'm going to grab some of that quinacridone and I'm going to do what's called loosely mixed, which means I haven't like mixed them together very thoroughly on the palette. And I'm going to come and just softly brush this in to the sky, making that cloudy, pretty sky. Coming up, paint off my brush back and forth. This is really friendly for new painters. I'm going to get more of the pink, maybe a smidge of the white, because that's going to help it show. It's really nice coverage on this. If you're wondering what I'm thinking, I'm thinking I love the saturation. I love the pop. It is exactly like my favorite Quinn. So Quinn Magenta is one of my very favorite colors. And I'm really liking this. There's no drag on my brush. And the pigmentation is great, which is really all I need out of that. Now it can be fun to take some of these pink down into that. I'm going to rinse out a little bit. So I'm going to come and get just the quinacridone pink here, a little white. So you can do a lot of beautiful pictures with just a few colors. I think sometimes people think that they need to have hundreds and hundreds of colors and it's fun. I, I won't lie to you, as you get into painting, you'll find that colors end up finding friends and you get more of them. But you can start with just primaries. You do a lot of really beautiful stuff. Now the next fun transition, I'm going to take a little of the pink. I'm going to get a smidge of this as the blue. It's a phthalo blue. And I'm going to mix them together to make purple. And I think it helps to get a little white into that. And I'm again just going to brush across. And you can see that it's loosely mixed by the way that I get a few different colors on the canvas. Sometimes like people don't know that something is like loosely mixed. That's what we're doing. We're scrapping all those little colors on that brush. And making this nice sky. You're going to be so surprised how easy it is to make three fun, great paintings. Just come right here. Make sure you've covered the canvas. And you'll get these nice borders when you pull the tape. Now it can be good to rinse out, dry off your brush. And I like to get a little blue in here and grab a little bit of white and just come right here. Get some dramatic blue clouds. Can you see how we're doing that? Just not too far into the yellow, but up here into the pink and purple be a really nice little touch. Go down too far and it'll darken the color on you and you might not like it as much. And the last touch is you can grab a little bit of pink 
Maybe a lot of white. This will be that last little fun touch. And you're going to just add some of this cheerful pink. To just fun skies. See how just like being loose about it and it feels like a windy day. Now while that's drying, and you're definitely going to want that to dry, let's rinse this out and put this to the side. We're going to start our rainy day painting. And our rainy day painting is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to start. I'm going to use what's called a bright. That's a square brush. This is a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. It's for acrylic paint. I'm going to dip in the water, drag off the extra water, and I'm going to pull some of my blue paint out just like this. And then this is going to be fun. We're going to come here to the black. And I'm going to get a little on the corners. And that's going to get that loosely mixed there. Loosely mixed, and then get some white, and then we just do this streaky rain. This is going to give us that rainy effect. If you over blend on the canvas, all the rain will go away. So, the trick will be to get your paint loaded up, a little bit of white in there, and just make these streaky brush strokes. A little bit more, a little bit more, get some white. Keep going. If you find that when you're doing the brush stroke that you're not covering a lot of canvas, one of the tricks will be dip in the water a little bit, drag off the extra, and reload a little bit of your color. See how that's called a bead? I'm going to come from the bottom this time and go up. Oh, that's nice and streaky. See how we're getting a very rainy day with that. Now, I'm going to get a little more black on there and a lot more blue. The thing to be careful of here is to just not have so much black in the mix that your rainy day becomes a rainy night. That could happen. Right now, if you're careful, we're going to just get a nice streaky effect. And that's all you're trying to do. I'm going to make sure my edges are fully painted. And then what I like to do is just make sure that my rain is not falling crooked. Come back over. And what's nice here is the paint isn't drying out on me overly quickly. Acrylics can dry pretty fast. It's very nice. And the body of the paint is very heavy. Um, I don't know. I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far. All right, I'm going to rinse out my brush thoroughly. All right, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. And then we're going to see if this will make one of my very favorite colors, which is phthalo turquoise. So when I make phthalo turquoise, I like to mix with a palette knife, and I like to mix one part green and one part blue. So what I do is I take a palette knife, and I pull it to the side. That creates a bead. And I'm going to move these over just a smidge. And I'm going to scrape this and make just a bead. And I just mix these together. Now we're going to do what's called thoroughly mixing, which means I'm incorporating these two colors together until they're totally incorporated. And this makes a very lovely turquoise right there. A mix of these two. And I'm going to wipe off my palette knife. I get a little bit wet and I wipe it off to clean it. This is really fun. Now, as long as this brush is very clean, I can use it again. Don't need a whole new brush. And I'm going to take a lot of my white. white. The white coverage of this is just fantastic. And a smidge of this blue. See I'm doing just on the tip of the bristles. And we're going to come from the bottom. And it makes this very sort of light blue sky. This is one of my very favorite colors. I love that it's in so many products right now and home decor because it just makes matching all my paintings so much easier at the moment. It's great when a color that you use a lot in your art gets popular so that you don't have a hard time matching all the stuff that you painted. Because I think the sofa should match the painting, not the other way around. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm very light here and I'm adding more and more color and I'm going to darken and darken as I go up. I get a nice dark blue. 
I'm just adding more of that as I'm coming up. It's getting quite dark. Just paint the whole top with this dark blue. And you can see I'm just stroking across here, back and forth. Not having a hard time. Okay. Just coming across here. Bring it down. And I'm just blending this down and you get this nice blend. This light sky color, so it's not a fun summer day. I'm going to rinse out really, really well. Now, for the next layer, it helps if all three of these are dry. So I'm going to go ahead and dry those. And as a note, in case you're very new to painting, acrylic can be temperature sensitive. So if you use the very high setting on your hair dryer, it can make the paint a little bit soft. Um, so I think it's nice to hold the hair dryer a little bit back, turn the temperature down, and let the paint fully cool before I try to apply the next layer. That way it's completely rested or settled. Are you guys ready? Let's try. So a lot of the modern colors, which phthalo is, quinacridone is, and our yellow is, can be a little bit transparent like a glaze. And with acrylics, I like to hit it with a second coat. So the areas I thought could really use it are up in the purple, and then I wanted to come back with a little phthalo and white. And then over here in the aqua, I just wanted a second layer of that glaze so that the sky was deeper. That's gonna give your final paintings a much more finished look, and I think it's worth the time. Once you do that and let it dry, you're ready to go to the next step. So now I'm gonna start putting in some of the objects into my paintings, and I'm gonna start with the palm tree. I'm gonna get a little bit of my water. I'm gonna get this brush. This is a little bit like a filbert, but you could use a round or a bright. It is listed in the description. I'm gonna dip this, drag off the extra water, and I'm gonna dip again. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm thinning my heavy bodied paint, but I'm not doing it so that I'm adding too much water. And that's a little bit about having control of the brush and also the paint. This is working really well. And I'm looking for consistent, a little bit like maybe olive oil, right? But not too watery. And I'm gonna start my palm tree. And to do that, I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna be super brave. I'm gonna make a little mark. Oh, now I get to do it. And I'm gonna make one line, very carefully, light pressure, and I lighten it as I finish the stroke, so it's thicker here and lighter there. That is one frond, and then I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go brush, 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 and now I'm making a nice little palm frond. The palm frond will be thickest there and thinnest there. Oop, 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 oop. Yes, noises actually do help. Come on the other side, and you can see with all palm fronds that you can see there off into the little sun. If that's there, let's give it a friend. Sometimes it's nice to rest my pinky here to steady my hand. And I'm gonna arc up here. So that's a nice little arc. And let's come here and do the same thing again. And so I'm taking the brush and letting the bristles create the palm frond. Right. I'm gonna bring this right here and do the same. Oh, that's really pretty. And I'm just remembering to keep them thicker and thinner. And let's add another one. Maybe a little more facing down, but have just a few little fronds coming up. Now I'm gonna wanna come over to my paint, dip in the water, get a little more of my black out, and then I'm gonna load, which is pulling my paint through the brush and flipping it both ways so paint gets in the belly. Where the brush stores the paint. So I'm gonna bring this down, make another little line, and I think right next to it, I'm gonna make another little friend. And we're gonna just pull these fronds just straight down because of their perspective to us, what we see. And then this one could have another little bit of frond. Oh, little fellow fronds happening there. Arc right here, dip in the water, load back up. Right, little curved stroke, just like that. And then just pull down the little fronds. You can kind of see how that curves. My spine on that little palm tree branch got a little too messed up. That's all I gotta do to smooth it out. Take another little one here. Go, 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 go. Now, we're gonna put our little trunk in. And I'm gonna come from the bottom. I'm gonna curve up thickest here and 
finished where it joins into the tree. So I just lighten my pressure. If I want a brush stroke to be thicker, I push harder. And if I want it to be thinner, I lighten the pressure, which I'm applying the stroke. That's all it takes. Now, once I have a nice little curved palm tree, I'm going to give it a fluffy little hill that it grew out of. And I just make these little dashing strokes. I'm on the edge of the brush right here, and I'm just taking those out. There we go. That's all that takes. It's actually pretty good, and the black is very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and load again to make sure I've got good coverage with my black paint. I do. Happy with that? I can let that go. Now, right here, I'm going to want some distant trees. And I'm going to want some water, but I've got to also improve some of my rain. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my fan brush. So when a brush looks like a fan like this, it's called a fan brush. I'm going to go ahead and get some clean water. I'm going to dip this in the water, drag off the extra, and I'm going to load up a little of my white paint through the brush. I'm loading that up clean my paint. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make some rain. And the rain's going to come down to about there. Just a couple little bits of rain. Maybe just some rain. That extra level of rain. Now the fun thing that I can do with this is right here, I can wiggle the brush and make a little bit of water that's running. Rinse your brush out really, really well. Put that to the side. All right. And we're going to let this dry before we try to put on our black silhouette. Because if I try to do that right now, it would mix with the wet paint on the canvas and make gray. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to rinse out this brush really, really well. And I'm going to start my really fun grass that's here. So to get the dark color of the grass, I'm going to take a little of my blue and green again. At this time, a little more of the green, and you can get some yellow into it so that it's noticeably green. I'm going to load that up, and I think it's really fun to do. I'm going to come up and I'm going to just take these little strokes, they sort of curve a bit like a parenthesis to the right, curving, 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 and then I'm going to come over and do this again. Let's make a fan of our grass too, right? So here we go. This is our dark grass. It's going to help our trees feel rich and contrast. I don't want. Just going on there nicely. Have fun. Playful. You got to give a nice little patch of grass. I'm going to test that. Looks like it's dry. I'm going to rinse out my brush really, really, really well. And I'm going to do a couple of things. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my brush again. If you need to bring the water over so you can kind of thin the black. I'm loading up. They go pull, pull, flip, pull, pull. Come over here. Let's grow midway up here, maybe like a little tree. I'm using my pinky resting on the canvas uh, to help me. That's another reason why it's nice if it's dry. And I'll go ahead and take that all the way up. I'm going to thicken the trunk just a bit, not too much, and it gets thinner as it grows up, right? Thinner, thinner, thinner. And you can take another little branch and maybe something right there because we're going to put mostly the canopy up here. I can bring in another little tree that encroaches over here. Now here we have some interesting little hills. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush up. That'll be like an embankment. I'm leaving the kind of like runoff and brushing that up, helping me make my embankment. I'm only taking that up a little bit. I'll rinse that out. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to do a little fan brush. I'm going to get some of my green on here. I'm going to get some black too. And I'm going to come and I'm going to, a little more black, more black. We just want a little green tint. I'm going to use the fan brush to make the 
top of this little hill here and you can see it's giving me a nice little foliage kind of on a little park embankment right and then let's get a little of our green and black again now here's the thing if the handle on a fan brush is down the brush makes a frown if the handle is up it smiles and i think for the i'm gonna have a smiling brush so that the branches grow up. See, I'm just tapping this. That's all it takes. Sometimes people get a little overwhelmed by fan brushes. They're actually friendly. You just have to know the smile and frown rule, and then it's all pretty easy. All right. So see how I've just left little spaces between that? That's all I'm doing there. And I've let that dry. I'm gonna rinse that out and let this have a dry for a minute, and then I'll show you how to like. Get it real pretty, but while that's having a dry, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my clover. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I'm gonna get a lot of white and I'm gonna load the white into my brush. And you can see I'm going back and forth, dip in the water, load, 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 load. I get a little yellow, load, load. And with the tops of my brushes, little water back and forth. Once I have a nice load in it, I'm gonna come right here. I'm going to come on this corner and I'm going to just do a little comma stroke. See how it just looks like a little bit like a comma? There we go. And let's do some comma strokes over here. One comma stroke, two, just a little bit of commas. And let's give ourselves a third little, little flower. And these all look like little commas. That's how you do the stroke. Then as I'm going, I'm going to get a little bit more yellow on my brush and some pink. Mostly a lot more pink. These are clovers and they're going to need pink. But I like the loose mixedness of it. I'm going to come right here. And I'm just going to layer a little flower in. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Maybe a couple more. I'm going to come right here. Ah, a little pink. A little comma stroke, making little flowers. All that takes. That's all you've got to do to get those little clovers. Okay. I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to show you one extra little step that makes it super pop. Just a smidge of white into your pink. Just a smidge. And if you do one last little dark layer, layer people will be like, What? Your clovers are so cute. And they'll be like, I know. I'm super artistic. There you go. So this is dry now. I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to put a little bit of my greenery on here so it looks like a wet rainy day with foliage. And to do that, I'm going to get a little of my green, load that up, come get a little bit of our yellow as well. And it's very loosely mixed. You can see on the fan brush, just super loosely mixed. And we're going to put a little smile up and just make sure that some of these. Have a little bit of green on them, right? In their little smiling canopy. It's pretty fun. And then I think it's really fun to add some of this to the grass. And this is where I go on the edge of the brush and I sort of flick out and it just makes the nicest grass then. Now we have some green grass that's being nourished. This fabulous rain. And you can go up here and touch in anything you need. It is a good time right now to change your water. Dirty water can muddy acrylic colors, and these colors are really bright. So if you want to keep them that way, it's good to change your water often. I'm going to do that. You do that. And let's meet back and finish these three projects. So for the next segment, it's really helpful to have clean water, and it's really helpful to have a dry canvas. I have both, so I'm ready to start putting in my girl who's walking in the rain. I'm going to show you how fun and easy that is. It's probably easier than you expect. So I'm going to get a small little brush and I am going to, this is a nice little number two filbert with a short handle, but basically you just want a detail brush. And I'm going to get a little of my white right here. And I'm just going to sketch in first the umbrella. Now I want her to be standing here and I want her umbrella to be up here. So I'm going to come and make a little sort of half orange shape. You think about an orange, just bisect that orange in half in your mind, half circle. 
And you can go ahead and initially just come straight across, even though we know the umbrella is going to have scallops, right? Sometimes I like to sketch in just very, very lightly so that I can see where I'm going and it's easy to change my mind. Now I know I'm going to have her come down and I like to say that, um, think about a little peanut, right? So we're gonna give her a little peanut shape. So a little bit like the planter's peanut. I'm gonna come right from the umbrella, bring down a waist, and then I like to blow my skirts over. I like to put elbows at the waist. So I always bring a little bend of an elbow down. And listen guys, if you don't draw and you really wanna do this, you can just go ahead and get what I call a traceable. They're free on my website. Just grab one and use it. There is not cheating to use a traceable. Um, that's actually an art skill that we use. And you're working on a painting skill right now. So it's okay to learn that art skill over time. I'm loading up with a little bit of black paint and I'm gonna do the funnest little leg. I'm gonna just make tiny slender little lines that are gonna end right here. And at first make the tiniest little line that you can. And make another tiny little line next to it. Those were pretty tiny little lines, right? Now I like to kind of imply a little bit of a calf, and a little bit of a, of a thigh there coming out. But that's just a preference that I have where I kind of give them a little bit of shape. I'm sort of known for that. I've been doing this a little bit. And uh, one of my umbrella girls, I think is really like, we pinned like a half million times or something. So <laughs> you may have seen this before <laughs> out there. So once I have those little legs, cause she's on very high heels. So, you know, that's what we're seeing. And we're gonna do a little reflection there. You heard me rinsing out vigorously. I'm gonna reload. And I just wanna make sure I have nice coverage, right? That's gonna help. There you go. There you go. And the other place that can be nice to have a dark little line is I can find that it's nice to have a nice little line right here at the elbow and waist. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put that dark little bit in right now. And then I'm gonna rinse out for just a second. Go ahead and take this. And it's, if you think that there's a little pick sticking up, you can start slicing your orange into segments. So I'm making a little middle segment and then I'll divide that in half again. I'll divide that in half again. And where I've done that, I'm gonna make a little scallop. So that would be to take the umbrella down just a smidge and scallop it like this. And that makes it feel a little more umbrella-ish. Once that's all done, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna continue to use this little brush right here. I'm gonna dip in water and I think it'll be fun to actually do the aqua. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my aqua and add a small amount of white to it. And I'm gonna paint my whole umbrella in at first, this darker color. This is actually how I'm gonna make kind of a bright white umbrella by using this darker color. It's a cool trick that we have in acrylics that you might not already know if you've never painted before. But just trust me, it will be white. We want our figure to stand out. I'm being very careful and I'm putting in my scallop, my umbrella shape, and getting that nice aqua base in. And that's gonna need to thoroughly dry. So while that's drying, I'm thinking that a yellow dress would be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get my yellow and I'm gonna start with just a little bit of yellow, but I'm gonna do an interesting trick. I'm gonna get a little of my anacrodone, make it just a smidge of warm, not all the way orange, but just a little bit oranger. I'm gonna come right here at the waist. I'm gonna go like this. Now this is a very good test of a paint because many yellows are so transparent 
that there's no way they could cover a black line in any capacity and you have to paint it all um, white first. So that's something I can tell you right now to look for in a paint. If a paint's saying that it's a pro or mid-grade paint, it should be able to somewhat cover dark color and this certainly has. And that's not easy for an Ozo. I would normally leave that up to the pad, which is a type of color. I'm gonna paint my dress and just make sure that that's painted. Rinse out. I've got to add my little bit of shoulder here, so I'm gonna get a little more of this paint on the tip. And let's give her a little bit of an arm that's holding her umbrella. You know what we're doing? A little bit of an arm. So in this case, it'd be nice to even have the black show through a little bit, but the yellow is covering so well, it's not. So I'm gonna actually have to do a thing where I grab a smidge of the black, <laughs> which I don't normally have to do. And I'm going to come here and take this sort of yellow gray and just make sure that there's the beginning of a little bit of shadowing right there. And then it can be nice to put that at the waist if you have a very light color. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. Letting it dry for just a second. And while that's all having it dry so I can get the next layer on, I'm going to have some fun and put in some weight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lot of my yellow some of my green, a lot of my yellow, some of my green, and I even like to get a little bit of my white. And I'm going to come here and make another layer of grass. It's very bright green. I had enough fun. Thalo is a really fun modern pink color, and I love the saturation of it. I love the chrome. I'm grabbing some just pure Thalo as I'm doing this, just letting it blend on the canvas, because look at the depth of that grass. It's just surprising. How nice it is. There we go, just doing really well. I need to make some stems, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a little of the black and my green mixed together. I'll dip in my water, and so my brush is fairly well loaded. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna come right here. And at first, I'm gonna just curve a little stem down, curve another little stem down. I have a little curve of stem. Maybe this guy curves back that way. I like to grab a little bit of this and come and tap out just a little bit of like little green finish on the flowers. Look at that. They've got a little bit of stamen so that they feel a little done. I turn my brush to get a good angle. If you need to refine any of the stems to make them look better, this is a good time to do that. Now you can grab a little of your yellow and a little of your green, and I like to have it sort of just loosely mixed like this. And I'm going to come and just press, and I make a little leap, and I press, and I make a little leap. You can even get a little white into that to help some of these really pop. Press, make a leaf. Like that. Let's put some right there. Those really pop. Now, I'm going to grab a little more yellow and white hair as I'm coming down so these are bright and can show against my grass. Oh, that's all I need to do for that one. That's just perfect. I'm going to rinse, rinse, rinse. And now I get to finish out my umbrella and my girl. And I'm excited about that. So let's start up on the umbrella. I like to take a little bit of white, but I'm doing it from where I have a small amount of my aqua. So from there, I'm going to come in at the top of the umbrella. And I'm going to just brush this down. You know, letting the, a lot of the blue sort of show through. Brushing that down. See how that's making it feel white in that background? Because we have the aqua base, it doesn't just blend into the phthalo. So this is a lot of very different paintings with one set. Sometimes people think, you know, they've just got to have every, like, every, every tool. It's fun to have tools. But just remember, generally there's a way. And I'm just brushing this white on top of it. So now I've got this pretty white umbrella. And you can always come back with a little of your aqua in there. 
And on the little segments of the scallops, you can make like a little kind of little shadow that comes up on the umbrella, which can be fun. I'll let that have a minute. And while the, this is all drying, I'm going to grab a little of my yellow and a little of my white. And behind her, I'm going to just make a little yellow reflection coming back. Because she would reflect in the water. Okay, let's pop her dress. So grab your yellow and a small amount of white. And we're going to come right here and we're going to start lightening this up. I like to bring it down the legs. The legs are just peeking out. I like to blow the dress way over. You know, that's a pretty couture dress. Just a little fashion illustration. You know, and just be fun with it. I'm going to put a little highlight at the back. So that's a little bit of white and the yellow. Come right here and just put a little highlight on the outside of the arms. Maybe a little bit. There we go. Grab a little more of the bright yellow. You know, be playful with the paint. One of the nice joys of heavy body paint, and this is a heavy body paint, is I can put it on super thick. Look at that. And it's not going to shrink as it dries. Really, um, cheap paint will shrink as it dries, but this isn't going to shrink as it dries. So that's going to feel probably going to be your favorite one you got to do because of all the texture. You know, I just think it's fun. Take advantage of the medium. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh. So fun. I hope you're having fun. I might even put a little bit of that into the water, into that reflection, because it's just such an enjoyable thing. Now, while this is all having a little bit of a dry, I'm going to get that detail brush again, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to dip in. I'm going to use this. Now, when you're looking for a detail brush, you just want something that gives you a nice fine line. And by thinning the paint with water, I am making that easier for my brush to do. I'm going to come right here. Make a little line up at the top of the umbrella. Just go ahead underneath and show some of the scallops. I think sometimes it's good not to make every line, but make some of the lines. So I like to do what I call break my lines is that I leave some broken open spots on them for the mind to complete them. But it can help. It can help when we're painting a little painting. There you have a blue boo. All you have to do is take a little paint when that's dry and come right on over the top and just erase it. Look at that. You didn't even know that was a thing that you could do. I also think it'll be nice to have just a little bit of a defined line right there. Coming around her so that we know we can see her. And you can even add a little shadow. Casting back into that yellow, which is very nice. Once you have all that, you get to make some hairstyle decisions. I'm going to go with, she's going to have raven black hair. And it's going to be blowing like her dress out over to the side. Loose and free. I think that's going to be a nice look against her yellow dress. You can change your mind. It is your painting. I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, guys, that's three great paintings that you did for one set. Let's peel the tape and see how these look. These look fantastic. And they're really different paintings that we did from one set. So don't let your materials limit your creativity. There's a lot of ways to get it. You're probably wondering what my first impressions are. I certainly am familiar with a lot of different types of acrylic paint. And what I would say is several of the colors here I know really well, like quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, phthalo green, the titanium white, which is one I was really looking at, and the black, which I was looking at really hard. Um, I've used Dazo. 
I found it to generally be really weak and not useful. So I was surprised at how much pigment was in this yellow Ozo paint. Like I was like, this is as good as some company's cadmium hues. So that was really surprising. Her dress is just glowing. The quinacridone is exactly what I expected. The phthalo is what I expected. The body is good. And here's what's important. The drag on the brush was minimal and it didn't dry out on me in a second. So I would say I'm positive enough to go back and buy some more and look at it further. Um, let me know what you think. Have you tried it? Did you love it? Are you excited about it? Because I'm excited about it. It's always good to see something new on the market. I hope you'll do these projects and share them with me. And if you'd like to see some more painting projects or learn more about painting, you can always check out like one of my 800 videos on these exact types of paintings. But listen, at the end of the day, be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.